Welcome to the LookDev department. Today I'm going to be showing you how to add extra geometry for masking in Substance Painter. For this project series, I'm going to be texturing a completed female model in Substance Painter. Sometimes I'm going to need to work back and forth depending on what's needed for the art. In this case, I'm working on this tool that's around her neck, which is like a type of mesh. And if we look at the artwork here, we can see that it's got this um, satin ribbon. But as it is right now, if we take a look at the UVs, the way that they're set up, it's not going to be very easy to paint that in. It would take probably half a day to paint that in by hand. So instead to shortcut that process, I'm going to add geometry to this that is specifically just for masking in Substance Painter. Now the cool thing about this is that it doesn't have to stay with the model. It can be done temporarily just for painting if it's a problem to add geometry. This can be the case if you're working in production and you're not able to actually make changes. You can make temporary changes that are just for the sake of the project. So in this case, all I want to do is add some edge loops. So if I go up to Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop, and then I just want to drag and drop. Now it's really important that you drag and drop and then just let it go. If you need to move it, I suggest undoing it and then trying it again because what you don't want to have to do is change any of the UVs. You want it to just drop right in place and be finished. If you need to move it, it's not going to work because then the UVs will be affected and if it's not something that can stay with the model, you really need to make sure that the UVs don't have to change for that. But just by adding a couple of edge loops along the interior side here, we're able to add some extra geometry that you can use in Substance Painter to select for masking. So I'm just going to go around the entire collar adding some extra geo. So I went ahead and finished adding all of my edge loops to the tool for the neck area here. And I exported my OBJ and brought it back in. Now I have a couple of options. If I had an existing file, I could go up to Edit, Project Configuration, and then select my updated mesh here. Or I could start a new project. Um, in this case, I decided to start a new project even though I had an existing one, but I wanted one just with the tool. So what I did was I saved all of my previous work. I put all of my shaders into a folder, right click, and then create smart material. So then I put my smart material right over here. When I started my new project, I could just drop it into place and everything I had done before is saved. So I made myself a fill layer and I just started painting in this mask. So let me turn this off and I'll just give a quick demonstration. So I had added a black mask to a simple fill, add a paint to that, and then I can use the edge loop. So I'm in, I hit four to go into geometry mode and I can use those polys that I created to mask. So I'll go over here to where the tool items are and I'm going to hit X so that I'm filling. You can see it's just turned white and I'm going to start just filling all of this because I found it was easier to fill and then take away. Now maybe picking a different color would be easier because poly selection color is red so we could just change this to like a blue make it a little bit easier to see. All right go back into that paint and there we go. And it doesn't matter what fill color this is because ultimately we're just going to be using this for an anchor mask. So this is all filled. Now I'm going to hit X and I'm going to start to take it away. So essentially I just want to mask back in wherever that gold ribbon is supposed to be. And the cool thing is if you have to switch out your mesh again, once this is in place, you don't have to retain those edge loops. So if those extra polys are going to be part of a throwaway, it's not going to matter once this is painted down because this is just a paint layer. It's the same thing as using a brush to put it in place. If the polygons change as long as the UVs stay the same, it's still going to be there for you. 
So I went through and did everything to get it all masked out. We'll just turn that one off and that one back on. Now it just looks low res because I have it on a low preview setting here. We can just turn this up higher to see the results. All right, and so there we go, nice and clean. So now that my mask is complete, I'm gonna right click above that and I'm going to create an anchor point. So let's just right click, add anchor point. I'm gonna call this my ribbon mask. All right, and now we'll turn the tool back on, open up that folder and inside here I already have my gold trim material ready to go I just need the masking for it so when I turn that on it kind of it turned on everything inside of it because right now it's not being masked out so I want to right click add a black mask right click again and I'm going to add a fill now on this fill I'm just going to select click on this gray scale here click on anchor points and pick up that ribbon mask anchor point. And now we have that added to the tool very quickly. So all in all, it took me about 20 minutes, 10 minutes to add the geometry and then 10 minutes to do the mask. Whereas it would have taken me hours to hand paint this in place. That's it for today. I hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe as well as comment below and let us know what you want to learn.